بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ مائی ڈیئر ریسپیکٹڈ ویوز ویلکم ٹو دس تھرڈ ایکس سیشن ایوری ایئر تھاؤزینڈ آف پیپل سیک شیلٹر ان ادر پلیسز دس از ناٹ نیو آل دو وی ہیئر دس ٹرمس like refugee influx, refugee crisis, refugee problem. It seems quite new. These problems are just the creation of modern problem. No, this has been there for thousands and thousands of years. Whenever, wherever there's war, There are people who are fleeing war. And it is a natural instinct, it is a survival instinct, in fact, to flee from danger. And, and it is also a human instinct to provide shelter for those who are fleeing danger. Even an animal fleeing danger, a human sees it and he will give them shelter, protection, food and water. And it has been human practice for millennia, if you like. People leave because they are compelled to leave. People seek shelter. It is not fun. It is not something people plan to do. It is not a wish that people have. One day I will become a refugee. It is the situation. It is the circumstances. It is the uh, disasters that compel them to leave and seek shelter. I myself left Burma at the age of 17 to save my life, basically, against the genocidal regime of Burma. I was born in Burma. I was grew up in Arakan, in a, in a reasonably respectable and uh, influential family. Growing up in genocidal country, like under the genocidal regime, like Burmese regime, the military regime right now, Having influential family means you are protected from many problems that my other fellow Rohingyas were regularly facing. I was shielded from so many atrocities like, for example, regular forced labor. Yes, it exists, still exists in many parts of the world, certainly exists in, in Burma, still exists in many forms. People are by force taken away and force them to work for, for, the, for the military, to building their camps, their homes, and often looking after their children even, of their animals working in their farms with no pay. In fact, the families of these unfortunate laborers have to bring their food from their house, otherwise they will starve. I left in 1998 because of my ignorance. I did not know, I did not know what question to ask, what not to ask. I asked a question of my citizenship. Although Rohingyas are ethnic, indigenous ethnic group of Arakan, now they change into Rakhine, they were declared as illegal immigrants by the Burmese regime. They say they came illegally. But the reality is, Arakan was an independent kingdom independent people, Rohingyas were indigenous people of Arakan. The Burmese are the one who invaded 
Arakan and colonized them, and the outsiders who came to Arakan by force, telling the indigenous population of Arakan, you are illegal immigrants, or you do not exist here, you're backward. A little bit like uh, Australia or Canada or America, the, the, the invaders are uh, disqualified the indigenous population as an equal citizen to themselves. And the exact things happen in, in Burma as well. I asked this question, why don't I have uh, this uh, national ID card? But long story short, there's a few arguments back and forth. Simply, they told me uh, that according to the law, you will have to prove the regenerations before you were here in in Burma, then you will be qualified for neutralized citizenship. And it was uh, very easy for me to prove that. At least I can prove seven generation above me with graves where they are, with names and all the other evidence, including the paperwork of land ownership in during and before British era. And I ask a straight question. Yes, I can prove that. And I doubt you can prove that three generations before you even you know the name of your great grandfather. And it was just a young, arrogant respond and ignorant respond. In light of the situation, I was I was arrested and I was handed over to military intelligence, MI. And needless to say, I was tortured. I was, uh, they'd done the unspe unspeakable things. Again, fortunately, my father's wealth came to rescue and with a big sum of bribe, I was released and I left the country because I was no longer safe to live in Burma. I came to Thailand without knowing anything about outside the world because I never have thought that I would leave the country. I never had this, uh, you know, the dream like, okay, one day I will become a refugee. Yay, I will go to Thailand and I will be founded by the uh, human traffickers and I will be sold into slavery time and again. No, I didn't know all of these things and Obviously, I was not planning to leave. It was circumstances. It was a situation that left no option but to leave, to escape for life. I came to Malaysia after Thailand. Yet, uh, everybody knows Malaysia is not a signatory to UN uh, Refugee Convention. Therefore, the refugees' life in Malaysia was very difficult. It was a sight. Uh, sometime, you know, when you leave home to go to work or some, you know, for market or wherever, you do not know you will come back home safely or you will come back home because if the police sees you or anyone, the immigration sees you and they will arrest you and they will take you. That was the situation in 2000 and 2001. And then I settled in Australia. I got an opportunity in 2005 to come to Australia and I applied asylum here and I got a protection visa and today I'm a citizen of Australia. Having lived experience as a refugee in Southeast Asia, I understand the difficulties refugees go through, and the challenges, and the limitations, and the uh, the blocks they have. I tried so hard to get some education while I was in Malaysia. I used to work in a factory in in Subang, 
for 23 ringgit a day for 8 hours and then I will spend 10 dollar 10 ringgit going to internet cafe to learn the computer skills how to use internet how to use computer because I have never seen computer in my whole life in Burma the first time I saw computer was far distance was in Thailand and the first time I actually touched a computer was in 2000 in internet cafe in Malaysia a kind man who gave his time to teach me but I will spend 10 ringgit every day almost uh, to go and learn this last computing lessons from him that is why we have thought to provide an opportunity and a, to create a platform for the refugee youth, refugee children to have access to education that they want to. And we create this uh, platform, this organization is called ELOM. ELOM initiatives, we call it. It was initiated by the refugees themselves and the the purpose of Elam empowerment is to empower to provide an opportunity for refugee youths to learn and to become productive members and to become, become contributing members of the society and the society that they are live in the society that they have uh, welcome. Elom means education or knowledge in our in our language. It also means E for education stands E stands for education, L stands for learning, O stands for opportunities, and M stand for stands for motivation. So Elom initiatives is running a number of programs, uh, English language programs, computer literacy programs, uh, vocational training programs, uh, sports programs, health education, family uh, education, and also the women empowerment projects, women employment projects, and also the uh, cultural programs to uh, to bridge the gap between host community and the refugee communities and to come together in a, in a platform, in a cultural uh, integration platform. Well, somebody asked me once, why, what drives you to do things that we, you are doing now? Uh, specifically ask for Elon Empowerment or Elon Initiatives. It was started as Elon Empowerment and changed to Initiatives. Why did you do that? Why did you start this? And for my understanding, I think, I believe in goodness in, in humanity. And those people who left their home, they have goodness, they have a lot of things to give. And the only thing is, they can only give when we allow them to give. For this reason, I ask everyone to know, to know, to put a bit of effort to know the refugee in your neighborhood in your places, in your town, in your country. All of them have a tremendous resilience story to tell you. And all of them has a life story to tell you. All of them has skills that they brought with them. All of them has a humanity, all of them has a kindness that we can all benefit from. If you allow them to shine, if you allow them to polish their skills and their uh, inequalities, they will be a beacon 
of hope and a beacon of change in your society even. The refugee, to become a refugee is not a wish. It is a calamity. It is not a choice. It's a calamity. Providing shelter. It's not uh, just merely a kindness. It's a responsibility. It's a shared human responsibility to provide shelter to those who's, who are in need. And it is not a disadvantage to have refugees in your locality, in your neighborhood. It is an advantage, in fact. You have a different person. You have people who have lived their life differently and they have a lot to contribute. They have a lot to learn from you and they have a lot to give you as well. I would like to conclude my talk in saying this. Please know your neighborhood. Please know the refugees in your neighborhood and allow them to become the contributing members of your community, your society. And you will see they will bring a lot of goodness, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.